So I have to admit, if I were teaching introductory programming in pretty much any language other than Scala, there's no way that I would cover XML. But it just so happens that XML is nicely integrated into the Scala language, at least at the, the time that I'm recording this. There is some discussion of taking it out uh, and replacing it with kind of less integrated support. But right now, it's actually embedded in as a language feature. And we can show this by running the Scala REPL and typing some XML in. Tag. And that works. Okay, this actually gets parsed out as a scala.xml.elem. So it knows that this is an element. Okay, in general, Scala has a package called XML and it has significant support for uh, XML in there. And you can write XML directly into your Scala programs and it's happy. So what I'd like for us to do is load in that file that we wrote previously, this XML file. I would like to load this in. First, we can see how we do it in the REPL. Uh, and then we can write a little code that actually pulls out the students and so that if we were writing a gradebook application, we'd know how to load in our XML. Turns out that if I'm going to use a lot of XML, I'm going to import XML.underscore. And then there is a an object called XML in caps that has methods like load file where we can specify the name of a file that we want to load in. And you can see just by doing that, I get the contents of this file here. Uh, my comment is gone because the comment wasn't really intended for a machine. It was intended for, for humans. But I have my gradebook around the course and then the three students that I had there. Okay, so that gives us the whole thing. This is now stored in res one. How do I get things out of there? Well, it turns out that you can do searching inside of XML. They defined operators using the, a single backslash and a double backslash. These are actually modeled after uh, a library called XPath, which is a standard XML library. In XPath, you use forward slash and double forward slash. The thing is that double forward slash in Scala means a comment, so they went with the backslash for defining these operators. The single backslash looks inside of whatever elements or nodes you have. It looks one level down and it tries to find things. And the second argument that you give it is either the name of a, an element or an attribute. We'll see attributes in just a second. So when I do res1 slash student, it pulls out the three students. And you'll see it has this type called oops, node sequence here. And it is a sequence. So it's much like a list or an array. And in fact, most of the methods that you're used to for lists and array will work on node sequence, except this sequence happens to have XML nodes inside of it, one for each of the three students that we have inside of our file. If I had wanted to get the course name, I could do that. And then I would get a node sequence, which has one element that is the course name. What if I wanted to get, say, quiz grades? Now, in reality, I'd probably want to get a student and then that get their quiz grades. But it's worth illustrating. If I just use a single slash, what happens, and let's bring back up res1, is it searches one level deep. So we're searching inside of gradebook here, so it only looks at the things that are directly inside of gradebook. There is no quiz directly inside of gradebook. The quizzes are nested under the students. This is where the double backslash can be useful. Now you do have to be careful with it. But by doing this, it will search deeper inside of things. 
and it actually comes back with our nine different quiz grades that we have. Note that by doing this, I've thrown away the information that some of these are associated with the first student, and some of them are with the second student, and some of them are with the third student. I've lost that information by doing the double slash. So you do have to be a little bit careful with it. What if I wanted to pull out names? In fact, something that you might note that is interesting here. In my file, I typed F name and L name. And when Scala loaded it in, it flipped those. And it turns out that for attributes, the order doesn't really matter. All that matters is you have this name and it has a particular value to it. So whether which one comes first is, is unimportant. If I wanted to look for all the first names in this class, I don't want to search for F name. Let's see, that doesn't give me anything. If you're searching for an attribute, you put an at end in front of it. So by saying at first name or F name, it gives it will search for the attributes. Here again, I have to use the double slash. If I use a single slash, it is searching for attributes of F name that are inside of gradebook. Well, gradebook didn't have any F name attributes. It was the buried inside of the students that had them. And so we get John, Jane, and Bob, but we have to use the double slash. Most of the time, you'll actually want to use the, the single slash, but you need to understand the distinction between them. Okay, so that is a brief introduction to the parsing. Let's start writing on a little program that uses this. So I'm going to read in the XML data. I'm going to give it a name. And then what I want to do is I want to convert each of these students here from an XML type student. So perhaps let's, okay, actually let's go ahead and let's get the course name first course name, because this is easy to do, relatively speaking. We take the XML data and we search inside of it for an element called course name. And then I want to get the text out of that, which is as simple as calling text. I can then say print line course name, and we can verify that that worked. There you go, CS1. Okay, so we're able to run this and this is loading in and we're able to search for stuff inside of it. But I'd actually like to get the three students out as well. Now in order for that to work nicely, it helps if I have a case class for a student. And what information do we need to have in the student? Well, all the types of things that we had inside of here. So I want their first name as a string. I want their last name as a string. I want their quizzes, which will be a, let's go make it a list of int. I want assignments, which is also a list of int. And tests, which is a list of int. Okay. So that defines our case class. We'll come back in the next video and we will actually load in from this XML data, store it into case classes and perhaps build an array of student to hold our, uh, our different values that are coming out of the file.